Hello, and welcome again to another session of Digital Slide Review, Sign Out. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel, coming to you from the campus of the University of Oklahoma. Um, and our program today is a, a collaboration of the Digital Pathology Association, PATH presenter, uh, known as the uh, Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy. Uh, we'll talk today about a case uh, of the GI tract. A 48-year-old man presents with right lower abdominal quadrant, uh, right lower quadrant abdominal pain uh, that has been uh, somewhat uh, short-lived, but uh, has become acute more recently. Uh, of course, uh, that uh, leads to further examination and rebound tenderness, uh, signs of appendicitis, and uh, the patient is taken to surgery. Uh, and lo and behold, it is discovered that his appendix has uh, ruptured. And you can see here a nice section showing what uh, rupture of the appendix looks like um, with a lot of fibrin and inflammatory cells. We see thickening of the wall here. Uh, we see preserved lymphoid tissue uh, in the lumen. Um, and so uh, uh, our first diagnosis would be uh, a ruptured appendicitis. Um, but notice that we don't have too much in the lumen. Um, and we want to look a little further here. Um, and uh, we notice that there's a little bit of mucin over here, uh, which is uh, not a good uh, finding. Uh, we wonder about a mucinous neoplasm, but we don't see anything right away here. Uh, the underlying epithelium here seems to be still a fairly normal uh, epithelium, but maybe we suspect here if we compare one side to the other that maybe we have uh, an early uh, serrated uh, lesion or mucinous uh, neoplasm going on here. Uh, producing some additional mucin because you see up here uh, we have normal mucosa and then it sort of transitions here to become a little bit more hyperplastic. So we've got some sort of mucinous neoplasia going on here, but the story doesn't end there. Uh, and that's of course why uh, surgical pathology is so fun. Uh, in addition to that epithelial component, we see here a thickened wall with this sort of insidious uh, infiltrate within the wall of some bluish cells. And as we go to higher magnification here, uh, lo and behold, we see that uh, these cells manifest uh, sort of signet ring morphology, little clustering of cells, uh, a lot of goblet type cells, a few mucin containing glands within the wall. Um, and this is the configuration of a goblet cell carcinoid. It doesn't involve the surface. This is a distinct component uh, that is different from this uh, epithelial uh, surface lesion that we saw in the other section. Uh, this is a mural process, submucosal process uh, that infiltrates with the formation of small glands um, and these uh, apparent goblet cells or signet ring cells in a few situations. So uh, this presents the situation of goblet cell carcinoma, um, previously known as goblet cell carcinoid. Uh, these are generally lower grade tumors uh, that have some sort of combined neuroendocrine and epithelial features. So if we were to stain that tumor that we just indicated, many of those goblet cells would stain with uh, conventional neuroendocrine markers like synaptophysin and chromogranin. Uh, sometimes these tumors are incidentally discovered. Sometimes they're missed. Um, and generally, molecularly, they, they look a little bit more like carcinoid tumors. Uh, they may present with metastases. But the survival rates are not great. For an incidentally discovered tumor, 60% um, for survival at five years is uh, not very, very good. And that's from one of the larger studies in the literature. Well, uh, this uh, combination of features that we've noted uh, is not uniformly present, but uh, can be somewhat uh, um, generalized. So here's another case, a uh, similar sort of presentation, appendicitis, uh, areas of gangrenous necrosis, and so forth. But in this case, we see here's something in the uh, mucosa that doesn't look normal. So in addition to the fact that these glands all have sort of crypt abscesses, uh, they're a little bit atypical. Um, and their configuration and architecture is a little bit more sensitial than we would like to see. 
uh, there in the wall. Uh, Maybe hard to make a diagnosis of malignancy purely on the basis of that, uh, but looking a little bit further, and we discover that uh, within the wall here uh, is a again this mucin production associated with uh, these well differentiated um, uh, clusters and cells uh, in a mucinous uh, carcinoma type of configuration. Now this might just be pure mucinous carcinoma. Uh, but in the setting of uh, tumor in the appendix uh, with this morphology, you're probably going to do neuroendocrine markers. And again, if uh, this is positive with any neuroendocrine markers in a proportion of cells, uh, it would be best classified as a uh, goblet cell carcinoma or a mixed uh, adenocarcinoma, neuroendocrine carcinoma. But uh, the neuroendocrine carcinoma being the uh, um, goblet cell uh, lesion. Uh, so uh, there's another uh, picture to, to sort of cement in your mind and study uh, that pattern of sort of a mucinous dissecting tumor uh, with associated uh, well-differentiated uh, goblet cells uh, in uh, those pools of mucin. Um, another scenario that uh, can be seen, uh, of course, is uh, similar to that. This is one without much uh, in the way of a mucosal lesion. Um, without much in the way of appendicitis, but we see mural thickening. Um, and here again, uh, we see this uh, pattern of uh, small nests of cells, abundant mucin, and on higher magnification, these small microglands with uh, occasional goblet cells uh, in there, again, with uh, neuroendocrine features on immunohistochemistry, um, indicating this. Uh, low-grade uh, amphicrine uh, type of neoplasm. Uh, so there's another a nice example of this uh, lesion, this one without any associated uh, mucosal lesion. Uh, and we can see it in several sections in this tumor. So uh, goblet cell carcinoma, in terms of its association with other neoplasms, uh, many of these older terms uh, previously, such as uh, carcinoma X, goblet cell carcinoma, and so forth, have been abandoned. But we will still see low-grade neoplasms uh, associated with this lesion, and on occasion, high-grade neoplasm. Though uh, these, in m most instances, will most often be classified as mixed neuroendocrine, non-neuroendocrine uh, carcinomas on the basis of that high-grade uh, tumor. Now, it's important to note that <clears throat> Conventional grading schemes for appendiceal carcinomas uh, do not apply to the goblet cell carcinoma uh, realm. Um, and so don't uh, try to uh, grade them and have that be expected to mean anything. Uh, this might be a great research project for a resident uh, willing to uh, uh, devote a lifetime uh, accumulating a series of these cases and seeing if uh, some form or form of grading uh, morphologic clues from quantitative analysis, KI-67 or other means, can provide some uh, realm of uh, differentiation grading that may help in uh, prognostication uh, of behavior in these tumors, because right now we just don't have that. But let's look at uh, some examples, uh, again, of this lesion uh, with the associated uh, other tumors. Now, looking at this slide, um, of course, uh, every budding GI pathologist will say, well, this looks like a tubulovillus adenoma. You've got long fronds and branching uh, uh, glands here, uh, lots of uh, dysplasia kind of thing. Um, and maybe even you might wonder about this being a potentially a traditional serrated adenoma. There's a few uh, ectopic crypt-like areas. Uh, but if you, think, if you stop there with the low power view, uh, you will miss half the story because uh, uh, lurking right here uh, in this section uh, is a different picture. Um, and so rather than being um, an invasive uh, component of this uh, tubular villus uh, neoplasm, uh, this is uh, the morphology of a well differentiated. Uh, goblet cell carcinoma uh, in association with this tumor. Um, and uh, so we see these uh, abundant mucin-producing uh, goblet cells. And on immunohistochemistry, you would find 
some neuroendocrine differentiation in a significant portion of those cells. And obviously this portion of the, of the lesion is uh, lurking here at the base of this uh, lesion. So whether this is occurring in a uh, um, uh, distal uh, colon site or in the cecum, um, the combination of this tumor with this uh, should make you think of uh, goblet cell uh, carcinoma uh, with an associated uh, uh, non-neuroendocrine type of uh, neoplasm. Um, let's take a look here and you can see the immunohistochemistry um, now, it's not uh, overly impressive, perhaps, because there's quite a bit of mucin here. But as you can see, there's a non-insignificant portion of the tumor here, which is clearly expressing uh, the neuroendocrine marker synaptophysin. Uh, so that should uh, provide you that evidence. And a reminder that, uh, of course, uh, we can have neuroendocrine differentiation in portions of these other tumors. But in this morphology, in this setting, uh, that would qualify as a goblet cell carcinoma. Uh, here's another example, and uh, this one's a little bit on the subtle side. Uh, again, I apologize for the pallor of the slide here, uh, but we can see that we have um, appendix, uh, small lumen, a little bit of muscle remaining. Um, and if we go down here, um, here we see a slightly subtle uh, lesion. Uh, it's a serrated type architecture uh, with uh, lots of mucin in the cells. Um, and uh, so we would say, oh, there's a little um, you know, serrated adenoma or serrated lesion. Uh, but again, if we do that, we may miss part of the story because look here, lurking in the submucosa uh, are these cells. Nice goblet cell forming uh, clusters of uh, uh, tissue uh, that, uh, again, if stained and queried with the appropriate immunoperoxidase stains, will show you their uh, mixed neuroendocrine features uh, in this lesion. So here we have a seemingly uh, in situ serrated lesion uh, with an associated uh, goblet cell uh, carcinoid or carcinoma, excuse me, in this uh, lesion. So we've seen it with the more villous lesion, we've seen it with serrated lesions. Um, and so uh, those are our, our caveats, those are the most, most, more common associations. Uh, we can see it with other tumors as well. And occasionally these lesions will spread. Um, and here's an example of a case which had peritoneal seeding um, with these uh, otherwise uh, uh, typical uh, mucinous carcinoma cells, fairly well differentiated with goblet cells and uh, signet ring type cells uh, on the peritoneum uh, emanating from an appendiceal source. Uh, so uh, this also is included, of course, in the differential of uh, disseminated um, mucinous carcinomatosis or uh, signet ring cell carcinomatosis uh, in the peritoneum and uh, abdominal cavity. So uh, that uh, summarizes nicely our, our uh, case today, goblet cell carcinoma, previously known as goblet cell carcinoid, um, and its uh, potential association with other neoplasms. Uh, be wary, this is a pitfall in surgical pathology missing uh, these lesions. If you enjoyed this uh, program, we hope you'll subscribe and uh, share this video with uh, friends or colleagues who uh, may be uh, uh, still on the learning curve. Uh, and of course, uh, we will post the link to these uh, digital slides uh, below and hope that if you uh, have the uh, time and inclination, you'll uh, take the opportunity to go and look for yourself more closely at these digital slides and see what uh, additional things you may want to uh, glean from uh, having studied them personally. I hope to see you again. And until then, uh, thanks for joining us.